Damn it, Zotac! Why did you put these crappy capacitors on this car? It meets the minimum NVIDIA spec. Yeah, but the Asus Tough model has the better capacitors. For the same price. Well, you should have waited for the reviews. I never wait for reviews. I wait for launch day and hope for the best. Well, uh, th that's, uh, that's on you then, isn't it? No, you sold a shitty product and I'm going to complain to the whole world about it. You can just return it, you know, and, and buy the other model. It's, it's fine. It's fine. Oh, no, nah, I'm not waiting. I'll just whine about it and keep it. <laughs> hey guys, welcome to Frame Chasers. Uh, we're gonna be doing some more... This is more of a recap of the stream, the hour-long one. I've pretty much been testing my card for like a full day now. Um, I can confidently say it's not associated with the total voltage going through the card or the total frequency going through the card. I had my card at 1080p uh, and I locked it at 1.1 volt and I moved it, I moved the, the slider all the way up to 2115. So uh, 2.1 gigahertz pretty much and it was locked there and I left it there all day doing benchmarks constantly it never crashed so the the problem is well not the capacitors on this model anyway but um the problem lies within the boost table itself on the bios of the cards so essentially what the problem is is the it's actually the voltage allowance that NVIDIA gave on these cards. You can you can go up to 1.1... That's actually... It's actually higher than Turing and Pascal with a smaller node. You can go to 1.1 volt locked on these cards. And that's where the problem actually... It's not the voltage. It's what it's allowed to, to go to is the problem. Let me explain. So you have a... 320 watt power limit and the card is told to boost as high as it can go up to 1.1 volts before it hits that power limit now where the issue lies is the varying loads that a game will place on a card and uh, let me let me explain this is also where the capacitors can be improved to help this but it, they, they could have also just fixed it by reducing the voltage. So what happens is, let's say you're playing a first-person shooter. You look over here, and you're facing a wall. The, the load on the GPU reduces significantly. Voltage spikes up to maintain 320 watts power limit. Now you face over here, and you're facing like down a mountain, and there's a million trees. Load goes up. Voltage drops. Uh, frequency drops, load, uh, amperage increases, right? You face back this way, you face back this way, you can, you can see where this is going? It's doing this constantly. So, over time, the more you do that, the more noise is introduced and the VRMs can't keep up with it. That's where the capacitors are supposed to take care of. So, what they could have done is made the voltage tolerance one volt and then what that essentially would have accomplished is if it had a one volt cap on the bios itself it would go up to one volt and then go as high as it could and then maybe it would lock itself at like two gigahertz under all loads and then it wouldn't be doing this constantly it would just be a flat line and you can get around a lot of this um you can get around the capacitor problem that way because it's not it's not jamming the uh, it's not jamming the 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 capacitors with noise and uh, turbulence, right? From the from the core, the core fluctuations. So I'm gonna go over to my gaming PC here and give you a quick demo of uh, exactly what the heck is going on, um, in case you missed the stream. But uh, yeah, just um, let's go over here. Okay, what I want you to pay attention to right away is. It's locked at 1.1 volt, 2100 megahertz right now. 
And it's actually drawing uh, not too much power. Desync off highest. Sure, why not? Apply. There we go. It's drawing a little bit more power now. Okay, so I, I've already tested this. So I know that I can run like a million benchmarks in a row all day long and it's not going to crash. So just with this data here, I, I can already tell you that it's not, it's not the voltage that's crashing the cards and it's not the frequency, not, not, not individually. Like, like the core speed itself is not was what crashing it and the voltage itself is not what's crashing it. It's when you combine these things two together in an in, um, not inappropriate. What's the word here? Uh, un unconfigured, a properly con yeah, properly configured fashion is where it'll start to crash. Uh, let me show you. Okay. Now th I want you to pay attention to what happens now when we reduce the power limit to stock and have stock clock, uh, et cetera, et cetera. This is what crashes the card. So, do you see the voltage going up and down trying to maintain the wattage that we've given it? You can see the frequency skyrocketing, dropping, skyrocketing, dropping. It's always trying to maintain that 320 watt power limit. This is what crashes games. Uh, let's go to a benchmark here. Resolution modifier. Can we turn this up? No, we cannot. All right, run benchmark. So look, just look, look at the voltage and look at the frequency, just constantly bumping up and down. That's the problem. In itself, the frequency is fine. In itself, the voltage is fine. It's, it's the way they did the boost tables. That's, that's, um, that's crashing your cards out of the box. So every time it tries to boost past two gigahertz and it's, it's cranking the voltage, it has to... It has to drop the voltage in the opposite manner to, ma to maintain the power threshold, right? So let me show you how you can fix this. Now, here is what they should have done to fix the problem. And this is also what you can do to fix the problem. So what they and you, or what they should have done and what you can do to fix the problem is voltage lock your card. So let's say, let's say one volt is the maximum that we want. And let's say, okay, we're going to go to two gigahertz. I don't know if that's stable or not, but plus 50. All right. So this is what you have to do. Move everything down a bit. Take your one volt, move it up two gigahertz. Check. Now, one volt is now going to be the maximum that the card is going to pull under load. So watch this. Look. Look, look at this. One volt, zero fluctuations in the power, in the voltage, and the clock speed. You've just reduced... All of that noise and interference and turbulence, you've just you've just given the capacitors a hell of a lot of breathing room by doing this. And this will fix your issue. Uh, it's basically you're basically undervolting the card to fix your issue. That's all. Um, but essentially, you keep your 320 watt power limit. You lock the voltage so it can't go above one volt or, you know, 1.25 or whatever you feel comfortable with. And then that fixes your problem right away. I, I hope that made sense here. Like, look, look how stable that is. There's no, there's no sine wave going on on your capacitors anymore. 
So I, I hope that made sense. Um, the, the problem isn't the capacitors, it's the boost tables that they put in there. So, so what they're going to do, they can essentially reduce the overall boost table by 50 megahertz or whatever, or they can reduce the, the allotted voltage that you're allowed to boost to in the next firmware update. So, uh, side note, you may want to back up your BIOSes now while you have them because we know that these BIOSes, even though they're crap, they do go up to 1.1 volt. So if they come out with a firmware update later that limits you to 1 volt or something like that, um, then at least you can go back to these, these shitty BIOSes and shunt mod it and you can actually overclock much further than those other ones. Um, so again, the way you can fix it is you can voltage undervolt your card to reduce the um, the power limit ceiling that it's bouncing off of. It's the it's the actual bouncing off the power limit that's making these things crash. That's what's doing it, and that's that's better capacitors would deal with that better. That that is that is what they're there for, but. They can also fix this. Like, let's say that was the NVIDIA spec and the AIBs cheaped out on the capacitors or whatever. All they're going to do is firmware flash your card and do one of the options that I mentioned here to fix it. Any one of them would work. Um, also, increasing your power limit works too. So if you, if you just go and shunt mod your card or if you wait until NV flash works and then you flash a 400 watt, power limit on these things, the extra power limit headroom is going to reduce the bouncing by X percent or whatever. That's, that will also, a shunt mod will also fix your problem too if, but that's, you know, hardware. But yeah, go back to my undervolting video guide that I did on the 3080. Find your sweet spot in between 900 millivolts and one volt. Lock it there. And then just wait. Enjoy your gaming experience. You're going to have 2 gigahertz all day long. It's never going to bounce anywhere on you. It's never going to crash. And then you can just wait to see how the cards fall later. Ha! Cards fall. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I also... So my card... My card maxes out at about 21 gig... Or uh, 2.1 gigahertz, as you saw. So I actually did order a whole bunch of capacitors to... To test this out before I did all this testing, so whatever they're already on their way anyway. But I got like a uh, a hundred of the little SMD ones, and I got like twenty of the uh, big SP ones. So when they arrive, I'll cap them off the card, and I'll I'll, uh, I'll triple up on the capacitance behind the GPU socket, and then we'll see what happens. Maybe we can clock higher. Maybe it'll maybe it won't do anything, but. The, the warranty on this card's already gone anyway, so we might as well just play with it and try it, right? So yeah, to recap, it's not the cap it's not the capacitors themselves. It's not the total frequency. It's not the total voltage. It's the turbulence and noise and it's the power limit bouncing that's making these cards crash. That's what's happening here. Um... Follow the guide, do an undervolt on it, stabilize your bouncing, download Afterburner, get your overlay going, see if your card is bouncing like crazy, and if it is, fix it yourself for now. Again, there's no point in whining about it. Figure it out. Fix it yourself for now. I know it sucks that it doesn't work out of the box. Clearly, NVIDIA tried to max these things out of the box so it would be harder for AMD compete to compete and now they are they're suffering due to their actions a little bit but you can either wait and whine about it or you can do what I did here and fix it yourself in the meantime and then get back to gaming less whining more gaming more fragging more teabagging oh yeah ah oh, ah oh. Suck on these balls. Oh, yeah. Anyway, guys, that's it for this one. Uh, if you like the content, hit that subscribe button. Do all that YouTube SEO stuff for me. Uh, also, the Discord is now private. We hit a 1,000.
congrats to the community. We finally did it. Um, there is a website down below if you were late to the party and you want to get into the Discord. That's how you get access to it now. If, if you are financially struggling but you still want to be a part of the community, hit me up on Twitch or Facebook Gaming while I'm streaming and then I'll give you a code to get into the Discord. I, it's... The, the the monetary um subscriptions aren't they're 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 not to block people from entering the discord they're to block the they're, they're, it's a layer of protection to block the trolls from going in there and just like bombarding the discord with nonsense but if you're a good person financially struggling you just need a little bit of help or something like that hit me up i'll give you a code to get in the discord i'd be happy to i don't need the money if you need a, if you need the money more than i do then please just keep it um, yeah. Also on that note, though, if you want to help support the channel, that's the way to do it now. Um, Twitch, a Twitch Amazon Prime subscription, so it's free for you. Um, or you can just directly support me through the website, the PayPal. There's no middleman. It goes straight into my PayPal. And then we get you some bonuses and some perks and stuff. Um, that money goes towards the community lottery and hardware for the channel so I can review stuff and not have to have sponsorships and and become Digital Foundry, right? Anyway, guys, thanks for joining me. I'll see you guys in the next one. I 3090 arrives tomorrow. I'll do, or, or to, I guess when this goes up, it'll be today. It arrives today. I'll do an unboxing video. And then I'll probably do a Twitch stream on Tuesday playing around with the settings and see how it overclocks. So that'll be really fun. Um, join the join Twitch on Tuesday, Tuesday afternoon, Pacific time. And then if you want me to benchmark something on while we're live, then go nuts. I'd, I'd be happy to, right? Um, anyway, guys, see you in the next one. Talk to you later. <laughs>